Hey y'all. Um, so Dave and I, obviously we have a lot of, um, I guess what I would call random different interests and content on this channel. Um, and recently I've been going through some stuff that I thought I should share with everybody to see if maybe we can start a conversation and if some of the things that I have been dealing with um, can help someone else and maybe also I can get some thoughts from all of you. So this is going to be um, a little bit of shock talk about perimenopause. Yes, yes, it is that time of my life. Um, and I have just been going through some really interesting things. And, um, and so I just wanted to share my experiences with you, especially for those of you who um, are experiencing it yourself, are expecting to experience it soon, or maybe even for those who live with someone who is either going through it or is coming up on it. Um, it has been a... Uh, an interesting experience um, in part because some of the things that I have gone through have been so completely expected and normal. Everybody talks about hot flashes with perimenopause, right? You know, I have definitely experienced some of those, um, but I've also experienced a couple of things that have, that are kind of on the more rare side of perimenopause, but then also in the course of researching that, I found out that there are like, 40 different symptoms of things that can commonly happen during menopause, if you can believe that. It's, uh, it's crazy. So I just want to start the conversation about perimenopause and about things that I've been going through. Um, the thing, what kind of generated me to get to this point was the newest thing that I'm going through. I'm kind of going to walk you backwards over the course of some videos of my experience. So believe it or not right now i am experiencing something called burning mouth syndrome it is actually a thing and it it's bms for short um and it doesn't just involve like a feeling of burning or tingling in the mouth but also sometimes on your tongue or on your lips and um it can be really painful. If you've ever gotten a sunburn on your lips, think of it like that, only it doesn't heal, doesn't get better. So I've been experiencing what I think is um, burning mouth syndrome on my lips for a couple of weeks now. Um, now, I just wanna make sure this whole conversation, everything I'm doing here, guys, I am not a medical professional. I am not giving any medical advice. I am literally sharing my wacky experience with perimenopause in the hopes that it helps someone else and that we can all kind of support each other if we're going through this. But basically it feels like I got a really bad sunburn on my lips, but mostly on the, like, on the inner edge of my lips and it hurts and it, Every, at first, I thought it was a side effect of a medication. Um, and then I was like, well, um, no, that medication's totally out of my system. So what's going on? And then I, was, then I cut out a couple of different foods that I thought might be causing the problem. Nope, not that either. And finally, just I finally just Googled it. What do we all do these days? We Google things. I Googled it. It's a thing. Between 10 and 40% of perimenopausal and menopausal women experience something called burning mouth syndrome. How do we not know about this? It's super painful, guys. And you know what the best part is? There's no treatment. You can only treat the symptoms and try to relieve them. So what I read, and um, I will link uh, up here a website um, where I got some good information about this, but I looked on a whole bunch of different sites. I <laughs> it basically, you just have to treat the issue. Um, it is supposedly, and again, this is not something they know a lot about, and that's something I've discovered a lot in 
finding things out about perimenopause and research into perimenopausal um, symptoms and things that happen is there's not, guys, there's not enough research into a lot of this stuff. Um, a lot of it is just, if you see an ear over here, that's our dog. A lot of it is just like people are just now catching up with the recognition that there are so many different things going on with perimenopause. So anyway, what this is, is it's supposedly an, a firing of the nerves that is off in some way, shape or form. Don't know what that means, but that's what this is. And it's interesting because I was, I was complaining about it a few, for a few days. And then finally, I thought it was getting a little better. And then I woke up today and it was all right. And then over the course of the day, it got worse, which by the way, is a common way for you to recognize that you have this issue. It gets worse over the course of the day. And so I, my, my husband came over, Dave came over and looked at my lips and he's like, oh my God, I can see it. Because you can actually kind of see it here. If you know me, you know that my lips are not normally this shade normally. You know, this looks like I've got a little bit of color, like I took a little, nothing. I have nothing on my lips right now. And normally mine are kind of, not pale, but like paler than this. So anyway, that's what I have been going through. So right now, um, I'm trying a few different things to mitigate the symptoms. One of the things that I found that actually that Dave, bless his heart, did a bunch of research for me while I was working today. And one of the things that he discovered is that vitamin B12 is a potential treatment. And not like a treatment treatment, but just a treatment to alleviate the symptoms. So he picked up some for me at the pharmacy this evening and I took um, a vitamin B12. Now I already get vitamin B in my multivitamin, so this is an additional supplement. No idea if it's gonna work. I will keep you guys in the loop. Um, we've tried using a little natural aloe on um, my lips, but because it's kind of a nerve and inside problem, it doesn't seem to be helping very much. Neither is all of my lip balm that normally keeps my lips even from getting chapped in the worst wintertime cold and like, you know, dry heat and stuff. It's just because it's, it, it's, it's like I'm being burned from the inside out. Isn't that great? And that sound like so much fun. It's not, it sucks. But I digress. <laughs> So I'm trying the B12 um, and then um, something else that works for me in terms of managing the, the pain a little bit is, um, is a, a, a natural supplement called Kratom. Um, we have some of that in the house um, just for various aches and pains and this kind of thing because it's a nerve pain is actually one of the things that Kratom is like a little better for. Um, it doesn't totally take the pain away. It just kind of takes the edge off, which is, is good enough for me to be able to focus and get back to work without being like, wow. But I mean, literally there was a point earlier today where my lips hurt so badly that I just, we had some cherries in the fridge and I just went and held cherries up to my lips because the cold of the cherries just felt so much better. <laughs> but I didn't want to totally pull out the whole ice cube thing. Um, but there are some popsicles in my future for sure. You can definitely imagine that there are some popsicles in my future because this sucks and something cold does help alleviate at least short-term pain because it just numbs your lips it's not a long-term solution again so those are the things that i have heard about and that i am trying when it comes to dealing with this totally weird rando burning mouth syndrome i'm lucky i'm not having the problem um knock wood inside my mouth or on my tongue but my lips are, so my lips are the focal point of the problem. Some people have it all over, some people just have it on the tongue, some just on the inside, it's wacky. So now, that's my experience. So if you have been having something random like this, like especially if your mouth has been really dry or really like tingly or burny, and you are in perimenopause or menopause, this is something you can at least look into and see if it's what's going on with you. I'm gonna keep track of this. If this goes on about another week, I'm probably gonna have a conversation with my doctor. Sometimes with perimenopause, things that I've found is that they come and go. Um, so this could be gone in three days or it 
could be hanging out for a while, in which case I'm gonna wanna talk to my doctor and see if there's anything else that we can do. But if you are someone who has dealt with this and has found a something that can help alleviate the symptom, please, please comment below, share it with me, let me know. I would love for everyone to see it um, because I want, I, I want to know. I mean, yes, I'm absolutely going to be speaking with my physician if necessary, if this continues and we'll be working with him appropriately. But in the meanwhile, if there's anything besides the B12 or the kratom that you have heard of that might help with random nerve firings in your lips, <laughs> let me know. I would love to find out, give it a try, and share my results, and then also have the discussion here in the group, um, here on this video. Um, okay, that's it for today, guys. That is, it's like Mary's perimenopause symptom of the day. <laughs> there are a bunch of other things that I've experienced as well, and I will share those in future videos, but this is like the current one that is rearing its ugly head. So if you have thoughts, or if you have questions, or if you just want to commiserate on stuff that you have been dealing with with perimenopause or menopause, or if you have something that helped manage all of your perimenopause or menopausal symptoms in general, feel free to shout it out. Ask me questions, comment. Let's start this conversation because there's no lack of stuff to talk about. All right, guys, um, thank you so much for taking the time and um, drop a comment below if um, this helped or you have something to share. Bye guys, I'll talk to you later.